guys, we're talking about the golf swing and how to make a, a really good spiral and how that relates to channel lock. I actually call this spiral lock. Uh, so whenever I started developing my golf swing, um, I look at science, I look at physics, uh, I'm looking at geometry, I'm looking at anatomy and physiology, uh, and also I'm combining the human element of this, just putting your personal touch on it, and uh, just combining all those things. I think if you can do that in your golf swing, when you're, you're building a golf swing, you're gonna be much better for that. If you, if you educate yourself as much as you can on all these different subjects, you're only gonna benefit from that. And uh, my, my golf swing is a accumulation of all those things. And I would have to say John Hensby is the person that probably influenced me the most on that because he has knowledge of all these different different subjects. And he certainly applies all these different things in his golf swing. And uh, that's simply what I've done. Um, so that, that's kind of the way I go about it. Um, so I feel like the spiral, we'll talk about that. I feel like it, it's very important in channel lock. I think it's important with any type of golf swing and it will work with any type of golf swing. But the, the first thing I want you to realize is uh, if, you, if you make a spiral, the correct spiral, and there's a lot of different kinds, but a really efficient uh, channel lock spiral, if you notice, we talk about corkscrewing into the ground. Now, if you watch the swings I made prior to this video, you're gonna see a lot of these things. I want you to really look at it, go back, and look at the different spirals that are in the swing. You'll see it with my ankles, knees, pelvis. You'll see it with my chest, with my shoulders, my hand path. You'll see it with the head, slight spiral, and then five o'clock nose, I hit it, and it spirals back around. Uh, you're gonna see it everywhere throughout the golf swing. You'll see it with the way the club head traces in the swing. You, from overview, from a top view, you would see it. From behind, you would see it. Uh, you're gonna see it from every angle. Um, so the corkscrew, basically, when you do this, you'll immediately, you're gonna feel balance and you're gonna feel like you're augering down and on the ground. Jage talked about this a long time ago. I've talked about this in lessons. And I was influenced by him, but first I thought he was just talking about balance in the golf swing. That's the way I understood it. But let me tell you, that motion right there, a corkscrew or augering, that is a spiral. That, that is what your golf swing should be built off of. I'm augering into the ground, I'm spiraling. When you do that, you're gonna have tremendous balance. You'll feel everything go straight down into the ground. If I kept doing that, I would just bore into the ground. So automatically I feel balanced. I am, um, I'm balanced, I have ground forces I can use on my downswing. Um, if you notice when you do this, you're not stacked up on like a lead side, trying to swing around that, putting all your weight on that leg. You're not standing on top of your right leg doing this. You'll corkscrew in the ground, and when you do, your weight will go right down in there. I usually feel it just slightly inside of this leg right here. It pushes me right in the ground there and I can hit it and I feel extremely balanced and powerful in that position. Uh, you notice the, how the knee, and JH did a lesson last week on how your knees make a little mini circular motion. Well that's the start of a spiral. They're little small spirals but it's there in your golf swing. Uh, so I believe the entire body does that. If you try to resist anything in your body, you're susceptible to injury. If you try to take your torso and keep your lower body quiet and turn, I automatically feel pressure in my back. I just simply corkscrew, go as far as my hips want to go. They're going to stop. Some people it'll be like 45 degrees, some are less. It doesn't matter. Just your body will tell you when it's got to stop. Your torso is going to rotate a little bit more. Uh, typically it'll do double what your pelvis will do but it's different for everybody, so I can't give you an exact number. But I, don't, I, I go as far as it can go, and I, I know when to stop. I don't push it past that limit, because I don't want an injury, okay? Uh, so it, it just coils, everything coils. 
I believe on getting a club on the shaft plane. I, I did the capital Y. Okay, I showed you the hinge. All these things tie together. I, I don't just make up things as I go along. This has been thoroughly vetted, tested in tournaments. It is a, it's something I do. And I, I'm just building this as I go. So I get the club on plane by making a spiral. I don't lift the club to that position. If you notice, I coil into that position. I coil up the plane and down the plane and back up the plane on the other side. I use the spiral to create that. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm not an advocate of lifting the club straight up. Because look, that interrupts my natural spiral that I'm trying to do. Okay, if I go straight up, I'm out of that spiral that I'm doing. My hands are on a spiral right up that plane. That appears to be a straight line, but there are no straight lines in golf. That straight line is created by the proper motion of my body spiraling up that plane and down it. Okay, that's what I like to do. Uh, this gives me the best results. It makes me consistent. It also makes me powerful in my golf swing. Um, it may not always be on that plane, okay? It can be a little bit off. Sometimes with the shorter clubs, you'll be slightly above that plane a little bit, but by the time you get to impact, all this stuff lines up with that hinge, okay? It'll line, the forces will line right back up, but I'm still making that spiral, trying to make it up and down that plane, okay? And um, so just look at the video and look at all the different little spirals that you see. If you notice, I stay inside this door frame right here. I've always talked about an imaginary door frame. I never want to get on this side of that door frame. I'm inside that door frame. Okay? Never, you'll never see me go side to side my golf swing. When I see somebody do that, I, I love to play people like that because I, they're going to be in trouble. Uh, so, uh, I know their balance is going to be off, and I know their swing is subjected to having just perfect timing and uh, trying to time things that they, they, can't, they can't time on a consistent basis. Uh, so, that's just my thought on the spiral. There, there's a lot of other things I'm going to cover on this. This is just kind of getting us started. And um, so... Like I said, you know, John Hensby, he's been doing this for a long time. He, he knows exactly what the spiral is. He knows the benefits of it. It's in his golf swing. It's evident. You'll see it if you look for it. Most people don't know what to look for, but now you've kind of got an idea of what to look for, and you'll see it. Uh, you'll see it in good players. Um, now, there, there are different types of spirals now. Uh, you can see shot tracers with the club, and you'll see different ones with the club head. Um, so they're, they're different types. I, I'm just looking for the most efficient one that fits my style of swinging the golf club. And the way I'm doing this works for any ball position, by the way. You can do it with any ball position. There's just a few little compensations you have to make when you move the ball up, forward. And uh, certain risks that you take on that, uh, like, you always bring a two-way miss into the equation, and there's no way to completely override that unless you have a back ball position. But if you're somebody that wants to swing in a more forward ball position, you can certainly do this. And uh, it's just my thoughts. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and uh, we'll catch you next time.